What is this thing I found at a farmhouse? The arm swivels and the drum spins, I didn't see any legible writing on the object, and I didn't really know where to start googling. It's about a foot and a half tall and three feet long, made of wood and metal, looks over 70 years old, but that's a guess. I'd be really interested to know what this is or what it's used for. It's a primitive butter worker from the 19th century. They were used to remove any remaining buttermilk from the butter, to make the butter last longer, and to work salt into the butter. What is this World War II era structure on a mostly uninhabited island? This is from the Palmyra Atoll, a US minor outlying island, staffed by only a handful of scientists. My girlfriend is one of them and found this structure out in the jungle. The island was used as a naval base from 1939 to 1959. Do any history buffs know what this was used for? It's probably a homing tower for US aircraft during World War II. I've read that they were on Johnson Island, another minor territory in the South Pacific. But it being 900 miles from there, it would make sense that they had one too, to help in crisis pilots ditch in relatively safe areas. Some kind of radio antenna tower for communications, a direction finding beacon, or a combination of both. Those circular insulators look like something for power. What is this leather strap with two cup-shaped objects, probably lead, attached with holes? It is mounted on the wall of a 16th century English farmhouse, so probably something to do with animals, but I can't figure out what. Any ideas? They are called horn trainers. The idea being that is when the horns are correctly trained by curving inward and downward, there is less danger of injury to other animals, which makes them less effective as weapons than if the horns are allowed to grow outward. The lead weights were placed on horns that were growing upwards, thus in time they would start growing downwards. I found this in my grandmother's attic, an antique 12 inches diameter laced oily. It has six pockets with string to tie. I just want to know what it's used for. Any ideas? It's a bun cozy, they are mostly used in the mid-20th century. I have one very similar to this, we use it for rolls or biscuits. The lace side goes down, and then the ribbons are tied together at the top. Each compartment gets filled with a roll or biscuit. It's rather silly, but I love it anyway. What are these stainless steel curved rods? They have been in my family since the 40s. They probably came from an estate in New Jersey of an English family that my great-grandfather worked at. There are seven of them and they are hollow and fit inside of each other. Each one has two sets of numbers. The largest number seven is about nine inches long. The best guess throughout the years is glove finger stretches for fitting gloves. Any idea what this could be? They are a nested set of seven cervical dilators, made in Germany from 1870 to 1930. They are commonly used to gently open the cervix before a gynecologic procedure, that requires the cervix to be open, allowing access to the uterus and fallopian tubes. Cervical dilation reduces the risk of injury to the cervix during such a procedure. What is this table I found at a local antique furniture consignment shop in Louisiana? It kinda looks like a sewing table my grandmother used to have. Any ideas on what this is? It's a late 19th century medical examination table. My wife's gyno office has a few historical items like this on display in the waiting area. It was probably specifically for illegal termination of pregnancies. The legs would slide in and the end of the table lay flat. It stays normal table till it is time to operate. My grandmother has this instrument, it was her father's, and we don't know what it's called. The mouthpiece is that little rod at the end that's curved up. All you have to do is blow, and it will make it sound. And there are no marks I could find on it. After I posted it on Facebook, somebody wanted to buy it for $2,000. Honestly, I'd rather just keep it in the family. We don't have too many family heirlooms roaming around anymore. That is a harmoniker. It was invented around 1861 by Louis Julien Jolin of Paris. It was intended as a substitute for the oboe. It had 25 piston-like keys, covering a range of two chromatic octaves, with white keys and black keys, 
arranged in a similar fashion to a piano keyboard. These are super rare. The Met Museum in New York City has one, the MFA Museum in Boston has one, and the Art and History Museum in Brussels has one. What is this machine I found in the basement of an old house? It is mounted on a plinth, approximately 26 by 16 by 3 inches. The overall weight must be somewhere between 35 kilograms and 45 kilograms. Does anyone have an idea? That's a horizontal steam engine from the late 19th century. The boxy valve body mounted on the side of the short piston, the lack of any place to put a spark plug, and the slides that take the connecting rod load, so that the piston and cylinder don't have any side forces, are all common steam engine features. Things like this were used in factories before the widespread of electrical adoption. I have had this for over 50 years. I found it buried in my backyard and I can't still figure out what it is. No markings, and the metal case has very delicate filaments. I'm thinking of some type of calorimeter or radio ballast tube. Any ideas? It's a catalytic lighter. They were popular in the early 20th century and available from many manufacturers, but they all have the same simple mechanism. There is a ball of platinum suspended inside of the small wand on tiny platinum wires. When the platinum is exposed to the methanol vapors in the other tube, it heats up and glows red hot, igniting the methanol vapors. These lighters can be fueled with yellow heat, an automotive product that is 99% methanol. I saw this for sale at junk stock and wondered what it is. I think it's a female chest protector for fencing. Modern ones are made of polycarbonate, but maybe this is an old one. Or a vintage bra, but I was having trouble figuring out how that part worked. Any ideas? It's an animal blinder from the 1930s, designed and patented by Henry Masbrich for the Russell Manufacturing Company of Platteville, Wisconsin. The blinder was used to control and prevent animals, particularly vicious bulls, from charging persons or other animals, forcing him to walk with his head up. There are slots in the lower part of the mask so he can see the ground, but not straight ahead. What is this cylindrical container my wife bought in an antique shop? She buys and sells antiques, but she has no idea what it is, and neither does the lady at the shop. It is about 20 inches tall and 5 to 6 inches in diameter, made of wood and covered with painted canvas. There was a Ziploc bag inside containing leather straps that had fallen off. I can't make out the words on the side, the language seems Norman French. Do you have any ideas about it? Please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let's make life fun.